I got out of the hospital, I was in a wheelchair, I go to a race, I do an interview with ESPN, the interview turned into a 10 year contract. I got a call a week after my interview, I said, Derek, would you like to do colour? I said, sure. I had absolutely no idea what I just agreed to. I had never heard the term colour before. I wasn't familiar with American television vernacular, but apparently ESPN were going to pay me to be a colour commentator and travel the world to talk about the sport that I love. And I met some fascinating people when I walked into the television broadcast booth. Interesting people who were famous in their own right, who were different and unusual in their own right. I spent 20 years with Paul Newman. He was a team owner of an IndyCar team that Mario Andretti drove for. I spent six days with Stallone in Vegas. He wanted to do a movie called Driven about IndyCar racing. And whenever he does a movie about an athlete, he wants to live the part. I Maybe the greatest sports hero that I was able to mix with was Muhammad Ali. I was in his house in Beverly Hills. What a thrill that was back in the 80s. But television broadcasting, it wasn't the people who fascinated me. It was the research. The research. Because you know, when I researched the successful teams, the extraordinary teams in our business, who get themselves on the victory podium at big races like the Indy 500, you know the podium in, 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 at the end of our races, all the teams go to the podium, in Formula One, they shake the champagne and spray all the mechanics and engineers at a great time of celebration. The Indy 500 has a very unusual tradition. They hand the winner a bottle of milk. He drinks a bit of it, pours the rest over himself. It's all part of the Indiana Dairy Association back in 1936. Realized what a great promotion this would be. It's gone on ever since. But the interesting thing about the victory podium is that's a place where the teams go to make a statement on that day against our competition. It didn't matter what decisions we had to make. It didn't matter what pressure we were under. Our team of people proved we were the best of the best. But here's the thing. When I did my research, I realized the number of teams who ever get the privilege of celebrating on the victory podium at a race like the Indy 500 that was so incredibly small. And I asked a really basic, simple question. Why? Why are so few extraordinary teams ever in a position to get themselves onto the podium to celebrate at these high pressure events? Do they communicate differently? Do they plan differently? Do they execute differently? Were they better under pressure? It was a fascinating set of questions and I had access to everybody. Mario Andretti, A.J. Foyt, Roger Penske, Danny Sullivan, Rick Mears, Michael Schumacher. I had access to everybody. And I asked them, why? And the answers were fascinating.